Well, we back. <clears throat> Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to part two of Blender Stuff. Um, I'm your gracious host, Tyler Ferraro, and I'm here with... Taylor! Taylor's back, and uh, so that means it's a good day. So last time we went over... Um, you can change objects by pressing S, the size of objects. You can rotate along a specific axis by pressing R, and then that axis is corresponding letter, and uh, ob object in edit mode and all that kind of stuff, uh, and moving along an axis, right? Mm -hmm. Every, you remember this, Taylor? Oh, yeah. Good, because there's going to be a pop quiz later. Oh, no. Uh, so <clears throat> a lot of times when you're modeling something, yep. Most of the times, they're going to have some sort of a material attached. They're going to have a, a color, um, a texture of some kind. Mm -hmm. Now, I will be the first to admit, I am not the best at texturing. Um, but adding colors and stuff is very helpful, and um, I do that frequently. So let's say you have, uh, I'm just going to make, I'm going to tell you how I made this. Uh, you press Shift D, and it just duplicates the objects. So now I have four squares just like that, shift D, whatever object you have selected. So I've had, even if I have three objects selected, if I press shift D, copies all oh. three of them. Yeah. Cool. So that's how you do that. So you have three squares here, and I'm going to select this one. And you come over to this tab here, this little circle-y looking thing. And this is the materials tab. You press new, and right off the bat, you get you can see it's a slightly different, more white color than the others. Mm -hmm. um, boom, you could just go and change that color right there. Um, I'm not gonna go through all these options, it's pretty pretty intense. Um, but obviously, you know, you could change the color to blue. Come over here, I'm gonna change this color to green. This one is gonna get the, let's see, uh, red color. So three basic colors just like that. Um, it's always important as well. Uh, you'll notice as I'm clicking around the material over here changes always important to possibly go in and add give it a name so you don't get confused and so I'm gonna do that why does that help uh, it keeps it organized because um, a lot of times you'll be dealing with a lot of materials and a lot of times maybe you want to apply the same material to a different object and it's better to see oh I want the red material rather oh. than material dot zero zero three much good. easier that way um, obviously, it gets a lot more complicated, and you'll see in this little drop down, I have all the all the materials I have here. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if I shift A and create a new object, and I want to give it the blue material, I could just boom go huh. down to blue material, and I would know just because. Well, it's, there you go. Yeah, that yeah. Makes very it simple. Very simple. Uh, so you can come down here, and you can change um, the way everything works. You can make it shadeless so it doesn't accept shadows. You can make it transparent, and what's nice is. Um, it'll update the preview in this little preview square as well. So I can make the blue very intense or not intense. I can increase the specular, which is the way the light reflects off it. As mm -hmm. I change the intensity, notice how light uh, kind of uh, dissolves, or that's not the right word, but um, gets more intense or not, obviously, by changing the intensity. You can, let me click the arrows here, you can make it transparent. So as I increase the Fresnel, you can see oh. it kind of you can kind of see through it. That's cool. You can make it uh, mirror as well. So change the reflectivity as well. Hmm. Wow. And notice also like obviously it's getting more complex, so it's obviously going to increase your render time as well, which we're about to get into. And you know a lot of these things I never clicked in my entire life, um, so you don't need to really worry about it all I that much. I have a quick question. I have a quick answer. About how long does it take to render something out? Well, yeah. So let's just go into running. That's a great segue. So first off, in order to render something out, you need a camera. So press Shift A and go down to camera here, and you get a camera. So I'm going to move this camera along the axes here. And to go into the view that your camera has, you press 0. So now I'm in. This is what the camera sees. So if mm -hmm. I was to render this out, I'm going to press T to get rid of that over there. This is basically what the camera would see, whatever is in this orange line. Um, I, I want to move the camera around, so I can press G within camera view, and it'll move around like that. Um, I'm also just going to press, just for my own preference, Shift A, and I'm going to add a plane, increase the size of that plane, just so that the boxes kind of sit on a plane almost. What's really cool is, and for film majors like us, uh, what's, or not, you're not a film major, but 
this is mainly going to be for film majors, um, is you can increase the focal length of the camera. Um, you can change the millimeters. You can change uh, the focus, the limits. Um, what I always do is I add composition guides. I always do the rule of thirds, and I also do the center. So I have so I know the center center of the center basically. Yes. So I always change the I always put those compositions on. You can add all kinds of composition like I don't even know what any of this is, <laughs> but you can add it if you know. Um, so that's nice. And what's really cool is for camera tracking, mm -hmm. uh, which we're not going to get into because I don't know what that is. Um, but if you get advanced and you know camera tracking, uh, you can choose a can a preset a camera preset. Uh, and these are all, so if you choose one of these presets here, it'll automatically put all the settings um, of that camera into the view, which is pretty cool. That's, that is really cool. Yeah. Um, so. And this software is completely free. Yeah, completely That's free. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so it's cool. So now let's say, you know, you have a scene and you want to render, right? Okay. Rendering is F12. It's the F12 button. Press F12. And this little screen pops up, and we have a problem. What's the problem? Can't see anything. Can't see anything. Right. So uh, we need a light. So we're going to shift A, and where's the light? Where's the light? Where's the light? Light? Lamp. Light? Lamp. That is. I'll look for <laughs> light. Um, you know, you can get pretty intense with these lights, uh, but we're just going to do a simple point light, which pretty much just spreads light out in all directions. And we're just going to put it right here. And as soon as you bring it up and it's selected, uh, you have all these options over here. Uh, you can change the color of the light, which is pretty cool. I'm going to give it like a nice little pink, light pink. I'm going to maybe increase the energy to a 1.8. Why not? Um, you could say if it casts shadows or not. Uh, I'm just going to say no shadow just for the heck of it. So now that we have a light, if we press F12 again, we should see there we go. So that is our object. It looks weird, mm -hmm. our square here, because we have it as transparent and a mirror. Oh, yep, yep. So we're going to turn off transparency and just give it a mirror. And it still looks weird. Let's just make it transparent. There that looks go. a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So you can see right through it, if we were to put this red box kind of behind it and then press F12 again, you can see the red box behind it. To get out of this render view, uh, you press X. And when you are in the render view, you can zoom in just like you would with the scroll, scroll wheel. And if you click and hold the scroll wheel, you can move it around and stuff, oh, okay. which is pretty nice. So now, what there. if, how do you expand the view so I can see the green box, the whole green box? Oh, so like that, you want to see the whole green box? Mm -hmm. Well, you can just move the green box or... You, but what if I want it there? I don't want to move it. You want the green box there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what you could do is you, obviously, you, you move the camera. Okay. So you take the camera, you press G. To, mm -hmm. So now you're grabbing the camera. Make sure it is selected and you know it's selected by the orange box. Press G. Press X and you'll move it back a little bit, there and then you go. can press Z, Bingo. grab Z, and now you know you're at a different, little different angle, mm -hmm. um, obviously. But now it's a it's a wider view. Got it. Speaking of a wider view, if um, you're modeling or whatever and you don't want any of this stuff here, you don't want any of this down here, you can press Shift Space, and it big. makes the whole thing big. And that works for anything. So if I want to make this whole thing big, Shift Space, as long as my pointer is in that little box, it'll make it full screen, basically. So now we're going to get into some other uh, cool stuff. So all I want to do is just mess with this box for right now. But this camera's kind of in my way, this light's in my way, and the plane's in my way. It's kind of annoying me. So I'm going to select the light, press and hold shift, select mm -hmm. the cam uh, plane, I guess, and then select the camera by clicking and holding shift. And I'm going to press H, and that hides it. They're all still there, oh. and all I need to do is press uh, Alt H and they all come back, right? Yep. So Alt H and H hide stuff, which is really, really nice. So now I have this cube and I can, I'm actually gonna turn off transparency just because it's make it complicated. And I'm gonna come to this little wrench here and it's called modifiers. And I'm gonna click down on modifiers and you get a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I'm gonna, a really frequent one is the array modifier. What the array modifier does is it, it's basically like shift D, like I said earlier. Mm -hmm. It did extend um, and it, a little. It duplicates it, right? Oh, it duplicated it. Yeah. Yep. And you can extend it for however long. <laughs> and you can increase the spacing. 
of pretty much everything. So this is a pretty good way. I've made steps this way. Yeah. Um, I've made, you it's can a make. a shortcut. Yeah, really simple shortcut. All right, so we're going to kind of go into a little bit more in depth for uh, some modeling. So we're going to go ahead. I just deleted everything, pressed A, pressed X, delete. I'm going to add a cube here, and I'm going to press S and Z, and it's going to reduce it down in size. And I'm going to go ahead, just to make it look more pretty, I'm going to go ahead and add it that green color, just like that. So I'm going to go press 1 and 5 here. And I'm just going to, I just want it to be right on that red, that red x-axis there. And press tab and go into face mode. And I want to drag this face up, but I don't want to drag the rest of these faces up with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to press E, but I'm not going to go up. I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to press S, and it's going to go in like that. And huh. now I'm going to press E again and go up on the Z axis. So now I have kind of like a little pedestal yeah. like that, right? Um, so that's pretty cool. I like that. Yes, cool. That's very um, cool. So I press 1. Now I go back into this view, and I notice that I kind of don't like how wide this is. So I'm just going to click all these faces here, and I'm going to press S, X, bring them in, and then S, Y, bring them in again. So now it's a little bit more tighter of a square. Mm -hmm. Come back up to the top here, E. I'm going to go up just a little bit, <laughs> size it down, and then E up again. And we're going to drag it all the way up, just like that. So now it's pretty tall. And we can actually make it a little bit smaller, um, I feel like. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now I'm going to press, press 3. So I'm in a side profile view here. And E. And obviously, you know, it goes straight into Z um, by default. And now I'm going to press R. And I'm going to rotate it. And it rotates based on your view. And I'm going to click and drag. So I want to try and make that this line continue to stay straight. And extrude some more. A little bit more rotate here. And this is why I like using uh, orthographic mode, is because you can use these lines in the back to mm, make sure they're the graph. to make sure it's straight. Yep. That's handy. Yeah. So now I'm gonna extrude and make sure it, yep, it's going along that axis. Okay, so now I have something. <laughs> Um, it's not it's quite. It's a bendy straw. It's a little bendy straw, yeah. So that looks pretty cool. Um, but here's the problem. I want to extrude this face down, okay, like that. But I don't. I only want it to go from about here, from this, from here to about here. Yep. Uh, I don't want the whole thing to come down. I want less than half to come down. So how do I do that? Well, when you're in edit edit mode, okay, object edit mode. Yep. Uh, what you could do is you can press Control R, go up to an edge, and you see this purple line pop up. So what I can do is I can click and then drag that line to wherever I want it, just like that. Click again to confirm. And now what's happened is if I go back into face mode, I have a separate face than what I had before. Now I can extrude that down like that, huh. which is really, really nice. And what's also really cool is if I do it again, and scroll up on the middle mouse wheel, I can make tons of them, Whoa. which is really cool. So cool. Uh, and it's that's kind of important for adding um, high poly meshes. Um, the more vertices and edges and that kind of stuff you have, the better you can mold and the smoother it'll look. Um, so that's pretty good. So now I'm going to get down here, get this face, extrude again, increase the size a little bit, increase the size. And a little one more time, one more size. And now what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, extrude. Just don't move it anywhere. I'm just going to bring it in like that and then bring it up on the Z axis. So we get like a little bowl kind of like that. Yeah. And now we have something that kind of resembles a street lamp, just like that. So we have a nice looking little street lamp here. And obviously, um, I'll bring up T and make it smooth. So now it looks smooth, and if I go in and I add, let's see, shift, nope, I don't want to duplicate. That is my fault. Shift A, add a camera. Where's the camera? There it is. Do, 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 do. Get the camera in the right spot here. And then add 
add a lamp point just like that uh, so since this is a I'm also gonna add a, a plane just so there is a plane I always like having a plane just because um, so since this is a lamp most lamps have a source of light which is usually a spotlight so I'm gonna come up and with the spotlight which is pretty cool is you kind of get this cone um, so it tells you where the light is gonna be coming from where it shines down yeah where it shines down correct um, so that looks pretty good for um, a lamp, right? Oh, a red light. Yeah, so a nice little red light. So now if I press F12, you should see the lamp kind of projecting down. So yeah, so that's a very basic little model there. And yeah, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Looks good. Thank you, Taylor. Do you have any questions? I think we covered everything. Perfect. Um, so that was pretty much basic uh, adding materials and a little bit more advanced editing uh, in the edit mode. Um, for the last part, we're going to go into keyframing and a little bit of animation and stuff. Fun. Yeah, so that'd be cool. Awesome. So we're done with that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next